workshop. Um, so the idea of the presentation was to also use that time to present you a little bit more, more who we are in terms of the research lab and also um, the specificities we can have that uh, the way we view these specificities. So I will present a kind of historical view of uh, who we are. So I am Nadej Poussier. Uh, I am uh, the scientific uh, animator of the research team. This is the Woo! terms I prefer. <laughs> um, I am there. I arrived eight years ago, but the time exists. I started in 2001, so much longer than me. Uh, so I will present my view on that time, which can be not not really the reality, but the history I, I can see in the crack before I came and after when I was there, so I will provide my view on that. But the colleagues helped me during the past years to build this view, so it's a kind of collaborative work that is perhaps not exact, exactly what I've been, but the view we have on, on this history. So, we are working on the link between technology and sustainability. In the introduction, I said that uh, we are in a kind of big engineering department uh, focusing on technology. So the, the, we are in that place, uh, the specific skills on sustainability. So what we are, our main question at all the team is what technology tomorrow? Coming from the natural context and also the evolution of society and technology, the other side. The way we are studying and this question is uh, trying to, to study um, with a special fi filter on the issues of resource, uh, resource consumption, of waste management and environmental impact. It is the starting point uh, of the lab. I put just a few pictures of the permanent staff and they tried to recognize because they were young at that time. <laughs> so, but the specificity is the, the fact that we cross different disciplinaries. So we have three main levels. The blue one, which is the starting point of the research lab, which is epistemology and philosophy, um, that um, started the work on these topics. And then two other branches, one which is much more on uh, management and urban development, one side, and the other one which is much more in engineering practices. So all the people we have in the team are somewhere in these three bubbles, and uh, what is making our common interest is the central point, sustainability and transition in sustainable system for um, production system, production with a, a big meaning, agricultural <coughs> production, manufacturing, all kind of productions. Um, so I will, in my presentation, use the term product, but product in a very wide way. Okay? Uh, so this is the team, and this team uh, had a big history. So what is important is not to read what is on the slide, but just to notice the website where you can find it and, and you can make it bigger, okay? Uh, I will just use this slide for, to explain the big, the big time we had in the life of the crate. So uh, you can see that there are different colors on the timeline, and you will see that we, we had some kind of big periods. And I'm going to structure my, my speech around these big periods to understand where we came from and where we are today, and we try to work now. So I will start with the first step, which is the initial, oops, the initial time uh, of the craft, which uh, was coming from, from philosophers and people working on epistemology of science and technology. <coughs> the, the main objective, it was in 2001, was to understand what is the definition of sustainable <coughs> development and sustainability concepts. So the first posture, I, I don't know if it's the right term, that means the way they've been in the topics, um, is uh, thinking that economic development and human development are compatible and can be combined. 
With that, at the starting point, uh, there were, during the first period, the assumption that came the hypothesis that reproduction of natural cycles in human activities can enable this compatibility between economic development and social human development. So this was the starting point, this period, to think about industrial ecology here in UTT, to come with that and telling industrial ecology is this, the concretization of this assumption, and then we can study the way it helps to develop sustainable strategy, um, and then to see if this assumption is right or not. So it was the first period that led to the second one, starting with doing this first job, a, a need to limitation of the, the first hypothesis. That means that um, there is a big dependency between industrial ecology, is studying the organization of industrial systems, production systems, and try to change it to reduce the environmental impact. But there is a big link between this organization and the product they, they make. So the idea was then if we want to act on environmental impact, if we just wait that product is defined and then we have the industrial system, we, we are just going to, to move the things but in, in a short impact on environmental topics. So if we go further defining another way the product, then we can also act and have more <coughs> Uh, reduction of environmental impacts. Then the team came in a second step that was always the same post posture, always the same assumption, but having two, two approaches, one which is much more um, local approach, studying a space, uh, and then another one which were more on eco-design, so how can we initiate new kind of products, new kind of value chain, that also can reduce the environmental impact of the human activities. So this is the second step. Uh, in this second step, what, what has been built in the lab is to try to come from the territorial approach, coming much more from uh, industrial ecology, and the product approach, much more based on the analysis of value chains. And from that, using the, the methodologies and the approach of industrial ecology and on one side and the eco-design methodologies to try to work on common questions on foresights, governance, deployment of strategies and using specific skills we, we developed in terms of modeling, decision support and assessments. Always focused on resource, resources um, management, waste management, and uh, pollution. So it led us to, to describe a kind of analysis framework, so a multi-scale analysis framework, with three levels. So I thought there was animation, but there is not. So you have three levels. The, the, the smallest one is the product scale. This is the scale of um, the value chain. Uh, and then, in that level, the question we try to address is how we could design a production system, how to deploy methodology that enhance sustainability, what tools for uh, scripting, evaluation, decision support, which kind of integration, so it is an important question for us, between the company and the territory, and uh, which kind of impact indicators we should use. The second level is the territorial scale. This is the place where the product is. And then the global level is the planetary scale because when we are talking about environmental impacts, we have climate change is global, it's at global level. So our specificity at that time was really to try to study the link between the, the impact in terms of uh, change of scales. That means if we have, for instance, coming from the top level, if we have big international regulations that are taken with assumptions, for instance, biotechnology is good to develop sustainability, is a kind of assumption at a quite global level. And then to see how it is deployed in territory and in value chains, and then to try to assess, coming back, if the, the deployment 
provide the initial assumption. So we try to work on that during quite a long time and, and really focusing on three aspects, resource management on the left, value networks and economical, environmental and social impacts. So for that, we still develop modeling and assessment skills in this kind of framework. So um, this is the, the, the second um, step of development of the lab that leads us to uh, a third step you know, you got it? Yeah. in a minute. So I will spend now more time per step because then we started a lot of questions and the evolution of about the, the way to, to view sustainability. Um, so coming from the previous step, we identified a limitation, which is that the territorial development and the te technological development are really linked on the territory. So if you refer to the work you've done in the workshop around this concept, you can see that it enables to analyze in a space different dimension, and this is a kind of place where several things can, can cross. And then we, we started that telling, okay, we still think that economic development and human development are compatible, and can be combined. And for that, we are going to try to couple the analysis of social and temporal networks of actors in a territory with the analysis of product and technical system de developments and build the relation with that using territorial concept. Then, for what? To understand the combination, the previous one, that we can reach perhaps between economic development and, and human development. So it had been made during several years trying to, to reach the, this assumption, to verify it. But um, we had some remaining questions doing that work. That work. Um, we had problem of uh, temporalities. We were working with a classical research project that uh, enable to analyze material flows, LCA, and trying to combine. Uh, but uh, we had uh, difficulty of really uh, change management and deployment because it requires much more time to develop a kind of shared vision at the territory level to try to start some evolution uh, in the development of human activities. Uh, we had some a lot of technical and human factors, trend towards the implementation of low sustainability solutions, so it was the, the weaker point for, for us. That means that each time we started a project with quite ambitious objectives, try to, to really make a step towards more sustainability, so propose some assumption and then evaluate, assess with modeling methods the proposal. But each time we were still in low sustainability, that means we are still coming from points and trying to reduce the impact. But time after time, we know that we have some temporal constraints, for instance, with climate change, and the, the evolution in low sustainability is not compatible with the delay that is provided by nature. So uh, it was a big problem for us to tell if we continue like that, we will not reach the constraints in time. And uh, also a question on what methodology for then for de deploy in another way technology to develop another way to try to reach these constraints in terms of resources that we have in short time delay so we cannot just change our practice. There is perhaps other ways, other assumptions to do to, to try other kind of deployments. So we had a lot of discussion in, in the team in that point and um, associated with discuss the discussion between strong and weak sustainability, we had more accurate question on what is the knowledge which is required to go to strong sustainability, um, what is necessary to develop and what to, tr and to transfer and to who. What parameters to consider using territory concepts, you've seen that it can be moved 
Uh, it's a concept to, to define boundaries, but we have to define the right scale to, to, to manage the content. And then this question of parameters, how, how working on sustainability, working on development, global development or rural development, and working on, on technological development, what should be the scale to study the way to have new practices that lead to more sustainability. And the question of temporalities to consider, because talking about sustainability, we were always in projects using some assessment methods such as LCA, MFA, that don't really, that are defined for one point of temporality, that don't consider different scales of temporalities. That means there is a scale, the time I am choosing, acting, the time I have the product on the market, the time I have the consequences of emissions, all that times are different times. So uh, we start to think about the parameters. So you've seen Fabrizio uh, session, so it is a paper film here uh, that made us think a lot when it came out about the scales, the problem scales, and then his historical study led us to tell, okay, we are coming from, coming from product view, we are coming from a parameter which is quite small, product, and then time by time, having more and more knowledge about the relation with sustainability, we see that we have to increase the space to address the problem. So is global bigger one is social technical space, that means including at the same time actors and, te and techniques in the analysis of what we have to study. And then we were, we were interested in that telling, but we have enough space for us that is used by the, that we can reach by the territory concept. Because then geography is not in, inside that, and geography is behind the idea of space. So uh, the question behind that were well, uh, what time scales of project, projection of action we should consider when we are thinking about a new technology. How to articulate uh, the different temporalities, the one of action and the effect of the actions, knowing that the, action, uh, the, the, the effects can be very long in time, for instance, talking about climate change, but not only. So then we changed our analysis framework. The previous one were, were with three different scales, and then we were assessing the way we move from product to territory, from territory to global scale, and do we have interrelation between that scale. Here yeah, we, we had something which much more looked like that, uh, with a time scale or so. So we, have, we can find a relation between the previous scale uh, in systems perimeter, coming from product and industrial system, value network, territory, anchoring that can be different scales, knowing that territory scales can move from local to global, it's kind of changing, changing the space tool. And then we have the time scales, uh, understanding that we should know the past, and especially for instance the past of the territory, to know what can be deployed and developed. We the past and the present that enable to have a kind of um, forecasting scenarios to, to short future, next future, and far future. With far future, which is a reference for sustainability, because concerning next generations. So, um, when developing some research project, we were trying to move in this space, knowing that uh, the more we are in that place, the more we have uncertainties. So this point of uncertainties are important because we have to develop also some knowledge about how to manage these uncertainties to, to have the best decision in the present time. So uh, we've made quite a lot of projects in that framework. I didn't put there all the projects uh, in the previous, but Thomas was at the present presentation, the previous one that is not there anymore. So I, I described which kind of project we've made, in which uh, which
part of this space to lead to um, conclusion that well, that our basic assumption, um, our basic hypothesis, thinking that develop at the same time economic economic development and human development was really difficult to reach in the project we had. So it led us to come to the first step, the, the last step. So the step we are in still now, but we we already made a move in 2018, uh, 17, 2017, uh, then to, to rebuild a research project coming from the law we have developed during all the previous years. So we, we started with again an identified limitation coming from the previous work to be developed. Uh, that work well, that's a territorial and technological development was really linked and we moved from the first posture that was that economic development and human development are compatible and can be combined. We moved from that to go to the second posture, which is much more in a strong sustainability framework, which is we have environmental constraints we we face for sure. And then human development is the priority as an adaptation to environmental evolution and not reducing impact as we were doing before. So that means that uh, we, we decided, because it was not so much studied in the state of the art, to have a kind of strong sustainability posture in that framework to see which kind of as hypothesis can we do and then can we try to check to develop new knowledge in that framework. So then the new hypothesis we've done to, 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 to drive our research work were that there are spaces so behind spaces, we still have the territorial, con uh, territory concept where network of actors can adapt to solve their adaptation problem. That change the way of seeing sustainability aspect uh, compared with the previous approach. And then um, the, the interesting scale for that is the scale where we have the ability to change the states of the society. And this scale of change can be the scale to study sustainability. So for that, we, we, we change the way we, we are doing research at different levels. So um, first, we put as an input point to work in environmental constraints and then environmental being financial constraints, we don't have no more money, it's a financial constraint, and we have to develop innovation without money. This is one of this context. We can have social constraints, big social stakes to solve with people that are very poor or that cannot afford to eat or to have the right way to, to live. And ecological constraints, in some places where um, water is not so good, uh, it's difficult to access to water or there are big pollutions. So uh, we tried to develop some uh, work in, in projects where we can meet these constraints, at least one of these constraints, at best all of these constraints. So being in this context, uh, the question that we can address well, not anymore to understand what is sustainable world development, which was the starting point of the lab, but much more understanding what can be a transition. So then we decided to, to change our name. So we keep the acronym, FRED, FRED that was associated to Center of Interdisciplinary Research and Sustainable Development, and we decided to suppress sustainable development, and then to become the interdisciplinary research team on transition towards sustainability of social technical systems. So it was a decision we took two years ago. Uh, and then to, 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 to notice the change of posture and the change in doing our research. 
So for that, uh, to address this question, we are really focusing on the territory concept as a mean to study the transition phenomena and finding the right scale to see things changing in society. So for that, we try to develop new methodology in the Strong Sustainability Framework and um, we try to use uh, new assessment tools for that also that are not uh, based on indicators but much more based on multiple view representation to see when we will not be in the limits. So the notion of limits or, or thresholds is very important. Then we, we are much more looking less on LCA, less on MFA, but more on circles of sustainability, uh, the donut economy, and the way we can represent, uh, assess uh, um, development process in that kind of framework. So, to, to go in that way, we have some challenges to solve. Uh, <clears throat> we have to develop new adaptation knowledge and skills by practicing, uh, which is different from the other way we were doing before, that was much more applied scientific knowledge to develop technological skills. So it changed the way to see uh, the process of building the knowledge. We also have, because we are in strong sustainability, we have time constraints. We have to fasten knowledge transfer in society. So before, we were focusing on transferring knowledge in companies, in industry. Today, we have to go faster, and the objective is to transfer in society, which is also quite different in the way we are doing the research. And um, the idea is also to fasten people's involvement because in the delay we have to have people that become um, much and more autonomous on technology to be able to adapt to their own problem. So for that we don't we don't try to develop startups or new companies. We just try to develop projects that can help people involvement in territories. So when we are on that, it lets us to have to open the scope, to mix the activities we have in the academic system, and then to change, to propose to change the academic model. So change I will put everything at the table. So change, what does it mean? It's that we have to develop a more holistic analysis and modeling approach, reducing the <coughs> systemic. But systemic requires a kind of model of decomposition we don't want to deal with. So we prefer now to talk about holistic, that means just, just focus on different elements that have links all at the same level. Uh, we also have to develop modeling approaches but modeling approaches in different scales of space and time, which is not so developed today. We have to develop design approaches and indicators that are um, more integrated uh, in terms of sustainable development principle, rather than separated in social, environmental, and economic aspects. Because we reach sustainability when there is no more difference between these three aspects. So if we have indicators that cut, then it will not provide us the way to, to see when we are really in sustainability. To link stronger uh, manufacturing evolution to consumption and social evolution. We are in the engineering department where we are focusing on uh, produce production, manufacturing, uh, and today there are some kind of, we are working on manufacturing and we have people much more from marketing, working on consumption model. But today perhaps we have to join the two models because the difference can be in putting it in that, not to cut it as usual. And then to focus on social evolution and territory aspect help us to put it on in, in the same order. To develop social knowledge transmission and sustainability development, 
to make awareness and ability to evolve much faster to reach temporal states. So with that we say, okay, if we try to do all that at the same time, perhaps we can work on strong sustainability and per perhaps it is possible to develop enough knowledge and skills to be able to address the states in the time we have. This is a big, big challenge, we are not sure about that, but we started with that. So the idea was to faster evolution, faster transition, and to also prepare for crisis, which is also a different view, different from with sustainability, where well, there is no crisis, we are just going to evolve. Yeah, there is a question of life, and then a question of crisis. And doing the research differently, and addressing all these questions will enable us at the same time to prepare society for potential crisis. So, then, what are the issues for teaching and research? So, we have to develop um, New patients, students, they should have much more multiple visions, so being able to adopt different points of views, and they, they must also um, not be frightened by risk. They have not to be frightened by risk because of the quantity of uncertainties. They should feel, feel comfortable with high level uncertainties, and this level of uncertainty should not prevent them to act. And act is an important word because we will come again on that. Uh, the idea is we don't have the solution, but we have to experiment to act and from action we have to build the knowledge from action. So um, this is important for us. Develop the awareness and culture mass massively, which is also a way to um, get more uh, generic and global knowledge to have new vision, potential vision, and being able to envisage production model in a different way, just because by history, by space, we can have other models that we can imagine and we can put in use in practice to experiment new way of doing. We have to try to deploy um, as a major transition factor, so we have to deploy by three different things, being able to sensibilize, being able to model and define methodology that are out of order, that means not in the usual model, but think the model different, and to evolve, uh, to make evolve the, actually we have disciplinary approaches, so this topic is interdisciplinary, and we hope that working in more interdisciplinary practice will able will enable to make evolve the disciplinary practices, including more sustainability steps inside. And then taking into account the current transitions, uh, the, the important one is current, that means we change also the name because we believe that actually it is already changing, so we have a scientist to discuss, to describe, to, to characterize all this transition. So then it, it also led us to change our research topics. Uh, before we were involved in project on green technology, but we are on the goal. We are going to develop green technology. So changing the posture, we, we are going much more on not trying to find technology, but to develop local autonomy in technology, which is much more our focus. We came from eco-design as trying to improve eco-design practices, new knowledge in eco-design, and then we decided not to use any more eco-design work, but then to come from design for sustainability as our main focus. The same with circular economy, which then is not really the goal because it is inside economy, and to get outside economy, we prefer to talk about industrial and territorial ecology, which is our, our main focus. And then the same, we're working on frugal innovation, which is not the goal. We can talk about conviviality, sobriety, which is more linked with the actors of the territory. 
So then this change has effect in the way we practice our research and the way we address our research questions. That means also that we have to change our position in the society and especially we were in a majority environment that needs really linked with industrial partners. So what is changing is that we don't want to, 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 to address technology as a response to company needs, needs or industrial needs, but then much more as a, an answer to social needs and not businesses. It will enable, we think, that to develop new businesses. If not, we will be inside an existing model and we cannot go out of order in that model. We need for interdisciplinary projects <coughs> to develop new skills, specific skills, so holistic visions, but also understand the issues of resources management, waste emissions, new man needs that are in different dimensions, different disciplines. We have to consider both at the same time technical and human determinants in the system we are looking at. And we have to propose new paradigms uh, for the, model, the modeling and the assessment of the solution that can be provided or that emerge from our own experiments. So it's enable, it enables us also to change our methodologies. Uh, that means we have to focus much more on change management, which is very really required. Uh, we don't teach so much change management to students, but in that case it is fundamental. We have to develop interdisciplinary skills, at least, perhaps more than that. We have to find places or spaces. I didn't know which word to choose, so I put both of them. Very true. <laughs> but territory is going to move, and here I'm talking about experiments, but that means when you are doing an experiment. You can have a territory concept to address the space level, but you have to choose a place. So it's not really the same because one is reality, the other one is the concept. So this is the reason why I didn't put territory here. It is a question of places or spaces, or geography in reality to develop, or to try to develop, or to see if they are developing such kind of communities of practices uh, in terms of um, system production that reorganize the model of production. At least that, perhaps more, we don't know. And that, uh, it, is, it is, these three points are some kind of basic requirements, not just for students, also for teachers because they don't know. Also for researchers, because they, they also don't know. So all at the same level, to be involved as a uniform world. And, and perhaps including also actors we don't have actually in our academic system at the time that are directly citizens. So from that we decided to make some experiments to see, okay, if we want to read that, and if we work as a uniform wall between students, teachers, researchers, and we want to include citizens, we have to go to place all together and to do something to see if we are able to answer some problems that are linked with financial, financial social, or uh, environmental constraints we can have in this place. So then we made some experiments, so it is an illustration of things we've done at UTC uh, and we, we've worked on different projects. Coming from that first at UTC, we had a um, partnership with uh, local uh, collectivities that asked us to come because they are big social environmental and they don't have money, so they, they want just to, to live because they are dying. So it was really interesting for us to say, okay, here we go with researchers, with students, with uh, teachers, and then we are going to do things. We don't know what are going to be the good or bad ideas, but then we are going to use our concept to try to study what is evolving in terms of state of this local society or not. And then perhaps find ideas or models, and at the same time the people 
The citizens are with us, are doing things, and are going to learn at the same time as we learn, then we fasten transfer of knowledge and then innovation potential. So here yeah, the big change is try to design at the same time the territory, the product we use, everything at the same time with technological evolution and social evolution at the same time. And then for that we think that we, it, it would help to develop more adaptability skills and develop sustainability at a local scale. That means that in different spaces we will not have the same <coughs> Okay. Then just to finish, the main idea of my presentation was just to, to develop our idea of what should be an integrated academic model to reach sustainability states. So for that we, we have big problems till now. We just have to find the right time to our scales, which is not so easy. I think mean, you've seen that. So but we deal with that and we hope we will find things. Um, I want to use that final words to thank the wonderful team uh, because you've seen them acting acting to organize the workshop, but uh, you perhaps let's see all of them acting to discuss on these kind of topics. It's just wonderful. You have to be robust, but it's wonderful. Uh, I want to thank you all, the participants, with the I, which is not there, uh, because it was also interesting for us to talk about local regional scale in this project, and then to be able to discuss with you the main concept we are we are used to, to try to use. Uh, we've got all the solutions, but which is very important in the research we are doing, and then the PhD that come in the lab <coughs> and all the time listen territory, 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 territory. Okay. So thank you for all, for all of you. Uh, and uh, I, I really hope you have a great experience and fun in during all the weeks. And, and that you are not going to, to be hurt for <laughs> <laughs> uh, the rest of the following days. So thank you very much. like in two years, measure the impact of your vision and in that idea of impact, what would you include? It's a, it's a question we have. We don't really know, but what we are going to test is to lead some exper experiments that will be on several years. We don't have the three years project. We have the, the territory we are working with, our local ones close to us and we can follow them in time. So first it was to have some kind of perspective on five, ten years in terms of time scales to see evolutions. Then what we are going to use uh, is to, to try to build ideas with the people, which is already a big stage because we, we tried already last year to do this kind of things, but uh, taking some, some students and teachers that are teaching in Algerian and going to try to develop their techniques in society, it's a mess. So actually, what we have observed, we don't have the right skills. So we don't know how to do. But the idea is to tell, okay, if we trust the, the local space, they are going to fly. We just are going to try to put activities and to see which kind of activities are going to make it go on or not. That's, at the moment, that's it. And then to assess if there is trajectory change of state, we, we think to, that we perhaps can use some tools such as sustainability circles. That means that enable to see when we get out uh, of, of um, uh, sustainable constraints uh, and see if we try to see if we reach to improve the, the space of fulfilling the social needs, local social needs. <coughs> 
So it will be this kind of things that we will use to try to assess, but actually it's experiments, we don't know at all if it's yeah. the right way to do it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the very interesting historical perspective also on how the work and also the, the perception of the working field has been growing uh, and how this growing and that this oh, it, what you're telling is how this also links to how you manage the, the research institute which I think is a very interesting thing but I think you're doing more than you're saying let me try to explain. Yeah, I am in Jersey. <laughs> in the context of the ISDRS, together with Martina Kreitz from Norway, we are working on a book on a certain approach in sustainability research, which is quite popular and a lot of people are, are urging for this. Um, and that links to participation and reaching out to actors in the real society. And for that we Together with Short Witches, I'm writing the first two uh, chapters in it, which is actually a literature review on that, those theories and on the methodologies. And in the theories, we see a couple of different of different tastes of this approach of working. And in the methods report of the chapter, we sort of had, we had intensive discussions about what should you say about the methodology there. And there are all kinds of examples in the literature for it. But we, we zoomed out because what was missing was actually the whole idea of the management of research institutes in uh, academic environments, which needed to be added. So, so I, I just want to add a word that at the end I really put academic, not research. Yes, yes. But the, the approach that we are writing about is transdisciplinary transdisciplinarity, transdisciplinary research, and I think you're a very good example of doing that. Also, I hear a lot about connections and taking the, the problems of stakeholders outside of the academia as the starting point for all the work. And so my question, let's end with a question, why don't you call it, instead of interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary? Of course, I think you're a good example. <laughs> Uh, I don't use the term because uh, it's frightening a lot of people. <laughs> and especially the people that don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, um, because we are in a Nigerian university where we have <coughs> we are working with physicians from people from mathematics, uh, from, from um, materials, yeah, physics. Well, yeah. physics. So, they are completely in disciplinary approach. For them, interdisciplinary, the first view is we are transferring knowledge to industry. Mm. This is in applied research that we are doing interdisciplinary. So in their view, reaching the idea of trans transdisciplinary is, is not possible because I'm not in the right way of seeing that. Mm -hmm. So as I use this presentation also for colleagues, I don't use the term of transdisciplinary. And I'm not sure we are actually at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we are at, at interdisciplinary point, but uh, actually I, I think that when we reach transdisciplinary, we reach a new discipline. I'm not sure actually we are, perhaps we are not so far from that, but we are not at that point. That means we are finding a way using this territory concept to mix disciplines and then to try to develop in a new theoretical framework new knowledge. That means we are not so far from <coughs> coming with a new discipline, crossing previous ones, but I, I think until we are not sure about how we define the boundaries of the territories, how we put in use, the theory is not there, so the discipline is not there. So I think we are not so far, we are in course, but we are not at the point. <laughs> Very <laughs> so I, I just want to thank you for uh, uh, helping us explore territory. I know I was very keen on this idea. Uh, so if you want to blame anybody, you can blame me. <laughs> uh, but um, I also I'm very impressed uh, that 
you are taking this concept very seriously, and also the concept of scale. Because this is something that uh, in the human geography, I can come at this from a human geography, geography perspective. I've actually been writing about territory and scale for 30 years now, and uh, I still don't know the answer. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but one thing has changed, which I think is relevant for what you're trying to do. Well, two things I will, I will mention. One, first of all, we, we used to have a very fixed idea of territory. Territory was something fixed, and it had boundaries. It could have been a nation state, it could have been a city, or a city region. But now, it, most people in human geography realize that uh, territory is very malleable, very flexible. It, it is in the process, what the, the word we use, and I, I, again, I'm self-referential, but I can't help it. It, it. Territory is in the process of becoming. It is always becoming. And this is a concept I've been using for... Yeah, it's a dynamic view in territory or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, so it has, uh, so it's fluid and it's also evolving. So you, you, your, your temporal dimension is very important. So time and space together produces territory. So territory is something spatial and, and, and temporal. This is a big change in human geography because we used to have a very thick, fixed view. Yeah, but just to react, uh, yeah. I think that the, the temporal um, aspect is coming from sustainability uh, perspective. That means it is the way we are looking at our research questions, addressing sustainability, and the temporal aspect is completely inside the concept. So yes. uh, I think that territory concept can be used in a different way working on other things. But when working on sustainability, we need this both spatial and temporal aspect of ter territory inside. Uh, I don't disagree with you. I, I agree with you entirely. So that's good. Uh, the other thing about is, is is territory the same as scale? Yes and no is the answer. Again, I've been writing about this. So I'm allowed to say yeah. this. <laughs> 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 well, this is a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Until we, we don't solve this question of perhaps it is just not surveyable, we have to do to, to see that another way. Yeah. We are not in transdisciplinary from my Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. But uh, so we use those terms interchangeably. In, we use both territory and scale. We mean sometimes when we say scale, we mean territory. And sometimes when we use territory, we mean scale. But one other idea, concept that uh, my, my PhD supervisor. Uh, I used it quite, quite a lot. It's this idea that we are all dependent on places. So your place perspective is very important. But the, the way that you develop those places, the way that you um, uh, uh, if you like, make places more resilient or you develop them economically, it is not, not, not necessarily through harnessing power or resources within those places. It can be something which is extraterritorial. In your territorial approach, you focus on people coming together because of proximity. I think where the scale comes in is where people come together on the basis of proximity, on the, on the basis of dependence on places, but they are always engaged with other scales at the same time and, and resources that are circulating at other scales. So I would just say I would add to your model this idea of territory but also don't forget ex extraterritoriality which we also use the term scale to describe that. But, but for sure, for, for us, territory is uh, multidimensional. That means it is not unique for a specific place. Uh, we, we can uh, add the cultural territory, the political one, the industrial one, yeah. in crossing in the same place. Yeah, I, 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 exactly, and I would disagree with you. Uh, I'm happy for you to read my papers. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I'm sorry, I just couldn't leave without saying that. <laughs> I think Eric had a question. Yes. Uh, Anna. Yeah. Anna Walker. Anna. Anna. Hi, thank you for this yeah, very inspiring um, presentation. I agree with Walter.
result is that interdisciplinary is probably more where you're heading to. Um, at the same time, I was wondering, in terms of social scientists, who do you think are in your department? Who do you think you would need in terms of uh, people working in the institutes or PhDs? Do you need people mm -hmm. from management? Do you need people from psychology? Mm -hmm. You know, like what, what, what is for the mix? Because you will interact a lot with people, so you need to have knowledge on people, which is not necessarily present with a mathematic professor. Uh, yeah, I will come back to very the initial slide <coughs> uh, that one. Yeah. We build that to define uh, the position we want to recruit, uh, which is the same kind of topics uh, I will come after on the PhD students. That means we, we didn't really care about the discipline. Okay. We care about the question, the research question, knowing that it can be addressed in different disciplines. And we care about the ability of the people to work in interdisciplinary context. Okay, so this is the main point. That means that uh, when we, we offer a position, we put in we put the, the profile and the, the central question, which is the thing we want to have people that are able to address the question, and we open that to three three kind of discipline in each in each of the bubble. So it's really unusual. We, we try to formulate that because the people in our university didn't understand saying, you are crazy, it's not possible. But it makes more years we are recruiting like that. And we wish to recruit people mm -hmm. that are happy to come and that want that. Because it is also very important to recruit people that want that because if not, they are leaving very fast. Mm -hmm. So going back to disciplinary. So we've done that. For PhD students, what we, we are doing is that we, we want them to be motivated first by the question. Uh, and, and then they can come from different skills. But what, what is sure is that the, we should have a proximity with the supervisors. Because it is also entering a network, knowing the community. So what we, we want to do with PhD students, it is taking them from their backgrounds and the proximity with the supervisor make them live in this context to develop interdisciplinary skills and then being able to publish we have common journal, interdisciplinary journal as a, a common target for everybody and we have specific skill journal in disciplines and we want to publish both sides that means that the PhD students is going to do one publication one side interdisciplinary marker and another one which is bringing back in the practice of his discipline new practices coming from the central question so and doing that we don't have i think we don't have a lot of problem of positioning for phd students because it's quite clear for them what is the added value in their initial discipline but they also develop some skills for interdisciplinary interdisciplinary topics do you, do you have any other, because I think it's really unique and nice, do you know of any other research entity anywhere who is doing a similar approach? Not so much. I, it's a question I have most of the time. I don't know so much place, so from my point of view, I, I don't know if we have so... We have some places where you have people that, that work like that but not in a formalized way. I think the, the added value we have is to try to, to formalize that, because by, by formalizing, it, it enables to explain what is interdisciplinary and perhaps one day, one day it could be transdisciplinary to, to other people and then to share on this kind of practices. So the last two assessments, we have assessments every five years on our research team, and then we have external people coming and then I think I will use their, um, their positioning of on what uh, we are doing <coughs> and the points they put as a very strong point that being able to have this maturity on interdisciplinary topics, uh, maturity that is transformed in a kind of uh, uh, specific practices that we've tried to formalize. But I don't know so much people working like that. Uh, most of the time, the problem is that you have human sciences one way and sharing another way. I hope we will resist to that because it is a fight. This week, I have not been with you during a few days because we have big 
question on, on that in the university because they want to, 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 to strengthen the discipline again. So we cut us. But if they cut us, we, we don't have anything to do with here anymore. So, so it is a big space because the system don't understand that. So this is certainly the reason why we tried to formalize. To, it was not to build a specificity compared to other teams, so we didn't really make the job to see who is working like that or not. It was really an internal state to be able to explain how we, we are working. It's much more that. So I don't really have the answer to your question. We have to work on that. Thank you very much.